Praise the Lord. Good to be in church tonight. Good to see all of you this evening and uh, come to have a good, good service tonight. Let's begin with prayer. Pray the Lord really bless our worship this evening. Brother Bill, lead us in prayer, please. Amen. Amen. All right. Good to see all of you tonight. It really, really is. Um, just a couple announcements. Sunday, looking forward to <clears throat> Palm Sunday service. Uh, this Sunday, we'll be having communion Sunday morning. and It's just going to be a great day in the Lord's house. Remember, 945 Sunday school, 1045 worship, and uh, looking for a good time. Sunday evening, 6 o'clock, Brother Herb preaching this coming Sunday night, and we're looking, uh, looking forward to that. Okay? Okay. Uh, Got several on the prayer list. I'm going to go down through the list. It's a long list, so bear with me. I'll go through it kind of quickly, and uh, there may be some for some that need change. You you help me out here, okay? Uh, remember Vicky, Cheryl. You go Friday, right, to see a cardiologist. Remember Cheryl. Remember Lana hasn't had a good day. Uh, Wayne Petty. Uh, remember Wayne Petty, prostate cancer. Uh, Stuart and Jennifer. That's. Uh, Herb and Doris' uh, grandson and wife. Uh, Mike Massey, the, I, I got an update from Doreen today, and he is now able to take some liquids uh, orally. Uh, it looks like Friday he may get to go home. They'll still have to feed him through uh, some kind of a feeding tube, but he can take liquids, and it's just a really slow, slow recovery. Uh, but they want me to thank the church for your prayers, and uh, so they love the church family. So uh, thank the Lord, but just, just hold them up in prayer, both of them. I know it's got to be hard on both of them. Uh, remember Sharon Cole, uh, with back, uh, Mike Looney, uh, Linda Teasley, Johnny and Wanda, Kay, Roseanne, Shirley St. Jim, uh, Kevin, Larry uh, was sick the first part of the week. He's doing better. Uh, Larry's got a test uh, next, next Wednesday. Remember Larry, uh, Jan, Herb, Ray and Jean. Jean Dotson, Roberta, talked to Roberta this week. She's doing a little better. Uh, Wilma, Mabel, Randy Sawyer's grandson. Um, remember Matt. Matt is home in extreme amount of pain with his knee. Uh, just really hold Matt up in prayer. Uh, Brad Burgess's dad and Brittany. Uh, Roseanne's son-in-law. Uh, Galinda Clark. Jesse Watson, Lois Rich, Easton Grady, Crady, uh, Gail Stone, Mike Catlett, David Robinson, Charles Cummins, uh, Donna McKnight, Charles Rose, John C. Graves, all three of those with cancer, uh, Maria, uh, Donna Lewis, Ken Dotson, Paul Jappers, Tina Mullins, Kenneth Leach, Lindell, uh, Mike Cantrell, uh, just a few more here, Jim Shaley, uh, Ashley, remember, uh, you know, Rick and Dawn, they've been coming, uh, and Rick's mother passed away this week, and uh, that uh, funeral will be in Arizona, so remember, uh, remember that family in prayer uh, this evening. Jacob uh, McFarland, uh, also remember that family in bereavement, and Leon has a test the 29th, right, Leon? So remember Leon. Uh, did I miss anybody? That's quite a long prayer list. Anybody I need to add to the list tonight? Yes. Oh my, her name is Abby. Remember this request, so sad. Amen. Glad Vicky's doing well. Yes, remember Lloyd. 
I remember, remember Lloyd this evening. Bill? Any others? Shirley? Bill Muse? Bob, okay, I'm sorry. Bob Muse family. Any others tonight? All right, remember all there. That's a lot of names. A lot of folks on the prayer list, but hey, we believe in prayer. And uh, we're just going to trust the Lord to meet meet these many needs this evening. All right. God bless you. Glad you're here. Let's stand while we sing the first song. Leaning on the everlasting heart. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arm. I have decided to follow Jesus. Cross. 
to heaven. Acapella tonight. Let me get our glasses here. All I have, all I am, and all I ever hope to be, I give it all, all to you. Watch and see, I will be true, Lord Jesus, you are holy, Lord Jesus, you are mighty, and I give myself wholly to you, all I've said and all I've done has been erased by your blood, and I am amazed by your grace. I raise my hands and praise your name, Lord Jesus, you are holy, 
Lord Jesus, you are mighty and I give myself wholly to you. Now I stand alone before you and your kingdom, Lord, and I want to see your blessing through more of you and less of me. Lord Jesus, you are holy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty and I give myself wholly to you. Lord Jesus, you are holy. storms howls above me and there's no hiding place it's a crash of the thunder precious lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder clouds drove forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, there is no to try for there's no end of sorrow there's no hope by and by but I know thou art with me and tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the sky till the storm sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by when the long night has ended the storms come no more. Let me stand in thy presence on that bright, peaceful shore. In that land where the tempest never comes, Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm is over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by
Well, isn't it good to know heaven's home? <clears throat> Somewhere beyond the grave, <clears throat> there is a land where Jesus went to prepare by his own hand and for the saved by grace there is a resting place and in a few more days it will be mine some call it heaven I call it paradise somewhere beyond the skies some call it heaven I call it home someone said you can't go back home again things will not be as good as they had been I've got good news for you when heaven comes into view one glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come some call it heaven I call it home some dream on some call it paradise somewhere beyond the skies some call it heaven I call it home all right Turn in your Bibles, the book of Galatians, chapter 1. We began this last uh, Wednesday evening, Galatians chapter 1. And I'm not going to go back and recap all of it, but I am going to kind of summarize and bring us up, up to speed. Uh, Galatians chapter 1, we're going to actually start in verse 11, verse 11. 11. If you would, you that would like to, stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. Here's what the Bible says. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persuaded the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which 
persecuted us in times past, now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. Brother Herb, pray for the preaching, please. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Now, let's go back to the beginning of chapter 1. We're just going to kind of summarize and bring us up to speed uh, where we're at. And I'm going to read these very quickly as we kind of bring us where we're at tonight. You know what we said last week when we get into the book of Galatians? You know what? It's God's saving grace is enough. And this is one thing Paul was driving home to those in that day when he wrote this letter. There were those that believed uh, to become a Christian. It was Jesus plus this, plus that. They wanted to add things uh, to the, the saving faith to, to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. They wanted to add circumcision. They wanted to add this. They wanted to add that. You know, my, Listen to me. It's Jesus alone. And uh, if you'd be here tonight, possibly never been saved, understand this. You don't have enough money to buy salvation because it's not Jesus plus all the money you have. It's Jesus alone. You, you can't think tonight that you're good enough or you've done enough good works because it's not Jesus plus all the good that you do. It's Jesus alone. So it's our simple faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, Christ alone. Let me tell you something. His blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary for us was enough to save us. Amen. We don't need to add to his atonement. We don't need to add to the price of our salvation. It was a high cost. It, was, it cost him his precious blood and his life on the cross of Calvary. Now, I'm going to real quick read, read these verses and we'll come right up to where we're we really going to begin tonight. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins. Christ, Jesus. What did he do? He gave himself for our sins. Notice that he might deliver us from this present evil world. And I'll tell you what, before we knew Christ as our Savior, we needed deliver, didn't we? From this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then we kind of get into what we discussed last week. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another, but there is some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. What we found last week, you know, Paul went in, he got a bunch of people saved, a lot of people uh, become Christians. He established that church and he left town to go to the next town, to go to the next mission work. And Paul no sooner got out of sight than the wolves started moving in. And, and false teachers, and they would add a little bit of truth 
Because any false teacher will give you a little bit of truth to make you think it's all good. And so they would, they would present Christ, but it was always Christ plus the circumcision or plus keep this law or keep that law. And, and listen, so that made them false teachers. Any, anytime you think you're going to add to God's work of salvation, listen, something wrong with that picture. Amen. We're not to add to or take away, right? Right? And, and, and yet that's what Paul was dealing with. In fact, in that one verse, verse 6, I marvel that you so soon removed from me. He was kind of shocked that it didn't take him long at all to turn to false teachers. I think he thought he had them better trained than that, you know. And, and so quickly they went to the false teachers and, and Paul said there is no other gospel. There is not another gospel. It's not the gospel of Christ and the gospel of this and the gospel of that. There's only one gospel going to get you to heaven tonight. There's only one Savior that died for sin. And there's only one door to get you to heaven. It's through Christ Jesus the Son. So Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come unto the Father but by me. So Christ is the door. And so Paul says there is no other gospel. He said, though even an angel from heaven would preach any other gospel, uh, you know what? which ye have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And he used that illustration simply to say, no matter how good someone may look, might even as an angel from heaven, if they're preaching something false, you know, that's God's curse on false teaching, false preaching. Which reminds us that stand in pulpits tonight, man, we better make sure we're sticking with the truth. <laughs> you know what? We preach the truth, we get God's blessing. If I get up here and preach you something false, I get God's curse. So I think I'll stick with the truth, all right? Uh, listen, and then he finally, uh, we, we got, let me drop on down to uh, verse 8 and 9, verse 9. And as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be a curse. He repeated that twice with a special emphasis on warning people against teaching or preaching false doctrine. Okay, verse 10, here's where we ended last Wednesday night. For do I now persuade men or God? Do, uh, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Any preacher tonight that tries to please men rather than God, what Paul say, is not the servant of Christ. He may be self-serving, but he's not serving Jesus. Now understand this. I think every preacher, every Bible teacher, can I go one step further? Every Christian ought to nail this down somewhere a long time ago. That you know what? It's not about you and it's not about me. It's all about him. And, and, and un understand tonight, you got to make your mind up from the pulpit to the back door. Are we going to try to please people? Or are we going to try to please God? Well, if we're not trying to please God, we're, uh, we're in the wrong place wasting a whole lot of time tonight. We're here to please God. We're here to preach the truth. We're here to pe get people saved. <laughs> we're here to get you closer to heaven. We're here to teach you some truth that will help you along the way, that will strengthen you and build you up in the faith. And you know what? You might just get a hold of something tonight that might become Sometime tomorrow might become an encouragement to you. And who knows who might need an encouragement tomorrow. Right. right? So listen, that's what it's all about. Paul said, do I persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? If I pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Now that brings us to verse 11. This is where we really get into it tonight. We'll probably, I'm sure we will. We'll finish this chapter 11 uh, through down through verse 24. Really, if you think about the book of Galatians, there are six chapters, okay? Chapter 1 and chapter 2 in Galatians is a biography of really the Apostle Paul. You know, what he has done in his life as Paul. He's going to even refer to his conversion, just as we're seeing in the book of Acts. But we see here the first two chapters are really a biography of what God has done in the life of Paul, and I think we can all reflect on it a little bit. We can see, you know what, look at our own lives. What's God done in our lives? 
Well, he's done some amazing things, hasn't he? Hey, the day he, got, the day he saved me, <laughs> that was amazing. Because, man, I sure didn't deserve that. He didn't owe it to me, and I didn't deserve it. So it was a miracle day the day I got saved. And the day you all got saved was the same miracle, wasn't it? None of us deserved it. He didn't owe it to any of us. And that's what grace is all about. So the first two chapters are a biography of what God has done in the life of Paul. Now chapter 3 and chapter 4, which we're not getting into tonight, I'm just giving you, I'm, I'm kind of summarizing. The book is divided in three areas. Chapter 1 and 2, the biography, what God done in the life of Paul. Chapter 3 and 4 is theology. It's what we're supposed to believe. In chapter 3 and 4 of Galatians, Paul teaches us very plainly and very clearly as Christians what we ought to believe. And then when we get into the last two chapters, Galatians 5 and 6, now we move from theology to the, the ethics of the thing. You know what? Now that we know what we're supposed to believe, you know what Paul covers in 5 and 6? And because of what we're supposed to believe, here's how we ought to live. <laughs> it's the application. And really everything we ought to learn from the Word of God somehow ought to be applied to our life, right? We ought to learn what God's Word says, how to live. Well, then we ought to go out and live it. And that's what we see in these six chapters kind of broke up into three areas. Now, the first thing I want you to see in verse 11 and 12, and that's really the title I put on the message tonight. Hey, it's a God thing. It's a God thing. Now, every now and then we'll use that phrase or you'll hear Somebody used that phrase. Well, it's a God thing. What's that really mean? That's not really a term out of the Bible. But that's, a, but that's a phrase that we use. And here's what it really means. It means that God did it. it, it it's, there's no other way around it, but God did it. It's a God thing. Okay? God's in on it. It's God's idea. God made it happen. God made it work. It's a God thing. I see that in this chapter. Okay? Paul, Paul begins, it's, it's not man's gospel, it's God's gospel. It's his gospel. Saving grace, we, again we say, God's saving grace is still enough tonight. Now look at verse 11 and 12. Paul says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Now, if you remember verse 10, he already said, hey, are we trying to please man or God? And now in this verse, Paul says very clearly, the gospel which I have preached, it's not of man. You know what Paul's getting ready to say? It's a God thing. <laughs> hey, it's from God. Because in verse 12, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. You know, the, this gospel that Paul's talking about came from God himself. It didn't come from man. He said it didn't come from man, and he even added this. He said, and I wasn't taught it by man either. You know, you can learn some things by being taught. You may even learn something in tonight's message by being taught from the word of God. But Paul said this gospel that I preach, I didn't get it from man, and I didn't learn it from man. God gave it to me. And we 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 ought to reflect back to, what is it, Acts chapter 9? There was Paul on the road to Damascus, the hater of the church, the persecutor of Christians, and that great light from heaven shined, and he heard that voice, and it was that day Jesus saved Paul. He became he was Saul of Tarsus, now he becomes known as the Apostle Paul, the great church builder, the missionary, the soul winner. And understand that, you know, it was grace alone, in Christ alone, that brought justification. It was God's grace. Again, it's not God's grace plus, no, it's just God's grace. His saving grace. In Jesus Christ, not in Jesus Christ plus something else. Like we said, all the money you got or all the good works you've got. You could have all that money and the good works in the world and it wouldn't be enough to get you to heaven. But Christ Jesus can get you to heaven. Christ Jesus alone. If we get anything out of this, nail that down. We don't need anything but Jesus. 
Okay? And we certainly don't need to please man. <laughs> we ought to be getting this from Paul. You want to please somebody? Please God tonight. is isn't about pleasing man. So he said, I've neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It was that revelation. It was the revealing of Jesus himself on that road to Damascus that day. That's how Paul got saved. Well, listen, if, if, we, if we look, now let's look at verse 13 and 14. And in a way, this kind of parallels with what we've been seeing some Sunday evenings in the book of Acts. He reflects on uh, his conversion. Verse 13, For you have heard of my con uh, conversation in times past, meaning his manner of living in times past, in the Jews' religion, in the Jews religion and notice how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Tell you what, Paul knew as much about the law as any Pharisee on earth. He was well learned. He believed it. He lived it. He was so into Judaism and, and, and the practice of Judaism. And as we said just the other night, you got to realize one thing. Let's, let's not be too hard on Paul before he got saved. Man, back then he, he hated the church. He hated Christians. He imprisoned them, responsible for some being put to death. But you know what? Understand this. He thought he was serving God. He was sincere, which proves one thing tonight, folks. You can really, really be sincere in what you believe and still be so wrong. Uh, years and years, dealt with a lady. And boy, she was so sincere. And that was the word she used so much. She was sincere in what she believed. And she was so far off base. <laughs> she was dead wrong. You can be sincere and dead wrong. You can be sincere about the wrong things and still go to a devil's hell. That's what we ought to be right about Jesus. Amen? We ought to be right about the, the Lord. Paul said, you know what? I had advanced even before and above my equals. The men that he had been raised up with in Judaism, he said, I even advanced farther than they did when it come to Judaism and trying to keep the law and uh, the persecution of believers, the tradition. He was zealous of keeping the traditions of my fathers. And really that goes back to the law plus, 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 okay? Things they had to try to do that they thought was pleasing to God. Now look at verse uh, 15. Something I want to show you in verse 15. Pay attention. But when it pleased God, here it is, who separated me, from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Now I'm going to read that verse again. I want you to see if you can get an understanding of this. Paul said that it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. You say, wait a minute preacher. I thought Paul got saved on the road to Damascus. Well he did. But I can tell you this. God had a calling upon his life before he was ever born. God had a call. Is that what that verse said? God had a call upon his life. Now, it took a long time for that to work its way out. <laughs> and I'm I, I really believe tonight every one of us could put ourselves in that same boat. And you know what? God had a call on our lives before we was born. And some of us, it took a whole lifetime to figure it out. Right? Uh, I'm, I mean, I believe what that verse says. I'm going to read it again. There's no other way to, to interpret that. It pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. So even though Paul did not realize for years and years that God had called him to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, that was the one thing God had him picked out to do, even from birth. Oh, well, so understand this. Are we not all the same? 
you know, even from birth, God had a plan. You know what? Here's what I believe tonight. God's got a plan for every one of our lives. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. And, and you know what? And, and you may be like Paul. Maybe it has taken you years or maybe it's still working on you to finally figure out what God wants you to do. Let me tell you what God wants you to do. First of all, make sure you're saved. I know God wants you to be saved because the scripture said it's not the will of God that any perish, but that all come to knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, so as we look at the scripture here, and it's almost like God had his hand upon us from the very beginning to become certain things in life. Now, we still have, we still have free will, so we've still got to obey, don't we? We've still got to obey the Lord to do what he wants us to do. Would you believe as a little kid about that tall, I, I would go out and spend uh, the, the summers at my grandmother's in Bourbon, Missouri, and there was a missionary Baptist church there by the railroad tracks, and man, that's where I went to Bible school and made these little neat crafts. I mean, uh, that was about all the Bible teaching I got back then in my life, going to Bible school, things like Sunday school, and we'd go back to, to Grandma's house and she'd cook a, cook a big dinner for Sunday dinner, and I, was, I had to be, I don't know, about that tall. And, and I got something to stand on and I got my little, a little Bible and I started preaching to the family. Who dreamed of that, right? <laughs> Must have started a long time ago. Uh, I don't know. But I, I'm just saying tonight, God's got a plan for all of us. He, he really does. And we need to be open to the will of God. We need to know God wants to use you. God wants to bless you. And it don't matter if you're 10 years old or... Uh, if you're 70 years old, listen, there's still time. As long as we got breath, there's still time to get it right. As long as we still got a heartbeat, we still got time to get it right. But understand this, when the heart stops and we breathe the last breath, our time to get it right has finished. So let's obey the Lord. Amen? Well, let's move on. Look at verse 16. To reveal His Son in me, that here's what God called him to do. Okay, We saw where God called him, uh, had his hand upon him, had a purpose for him to do what? Look at verse 16. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. He said, man, I wasn't dealing with flesh and blood. This was a God thing. I wasn't dealing with flesh and blood. This was, this was the Lord dealing. And what, did God, what was God's purpose for Paul? even before birth, to preach to the Jews? No. Preach to the Gentiles. Preach to the heathen. That was his purpose. Verse 16, Paul admits that. Now look at verse 17 through 19. Verses 17 through 19. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. And, and, but other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Now what them three verses Paul's trying to get across to us, he's, he's driving this theme home once again. What I've learned, I've not learned from man. The gospel I preach, I didn't get it from man, and man didn't teach me. God gave it to me. God gave it to me. And, and with that thought in mind, that's what he's saying. Listen, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them that were apostles. Hey, I didn't go to Jerusalem to get taught by the apostles. He said, uh, but I, I went to Arabia, returned again in Damascus. Why would he go to a, a, a desert area rather than Jerusalem, because he wasn't getting taught by men. He was getting taught by the Lord. He was going through a training time, <laughs> okay? The Lord was teaching him some things. He said, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. Notice he uses, he's very clear to tell us, uh, I abode with him 15 days. He wanted us to know he didn't spend a lot of time with Peter. He was just there 15 days, and Peter couldn't have taught him much in 15 days. This gospel he received was not of man. And then finally, he said in verse 19, but other of the apostles saw I none. 
except James, the brother of Jesus. I, I, you know what he's saying? I, I, didn't, I did not go and try to get with all the apostles and rub shoulders with these guys and see what they know and see what they taught and see how they preached. I'm going to tell you something. The apostle Paul, he was a God-made man. And his ministry was by the Lord himself. God gave it to him. God anointed him. God called him. God used him. Therefore, why would Paul ever consider trying to please a man? Man never had anything to do with his ministry. God had everything to do with his ministry. And I tell you what, we that preach the gospel today, really man has never had anything to do with our ministry either. So we got to please the Lord. We got to preach the word in season and out of season. We got to preach the word when people like hearing it. We got to preach the word when folks sometimes don't like hearing it. And the bottom line is any time a preacher ever gives in to trying to please the people is the day he needs to turn in his resignation. We got to please God. Why'd you come tonight? We want some direction from heaven, don't we? Then we want to hear from God. You want to hear from man, you can go home and turn the news on. Well, maybe not. I'm just saying, what do, you want, what do you want to get from, I want to hear from heaven. I want a message from God. Can I get something out of this tonight that will help me? I hope so. Can I get something tonight that might be a blessing and encourage me, even maybe tomorrow? I hope so. And if we've heard from man, you've wasted your time. If we've heard from God, it was good to come to church tonight. Now look at verse 20. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Paul is going to great lengths to drive home this truth. This is nothing about man. The gospel he had come from God himself, and he's going to preach it God's way, and he says, and I'm, I'm telling you the truth, I lie not. I don't think anybody would think Paul would be lying to him anyway, but he, want, he wants to let him to know, hey, I'm telling the truth. This is from God. Look at verse 21 through 23. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. You know what he's saying? I went to these churches. They didn't know who I was. They'd, when they saw my face, I was just another person. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know what I was about. They didn't know my past. They didn't know my history. They didn't know what I was. But notice what he says. Verse 23. But they had heard only. Here's what they heard. They didn't know him. But here's what they heard about him. Here's what they heard only. That he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. Didn't know much about Paul. But then they, they knew once upon a time he was out to hurt the church. And now they knew he's out to help the church. By the way, everybody's out to either help the church or hurt the church. And you know, Paul, they they recognized. They didn't, didn't know him by sight, but news traveled fast. And they knew that Paul was once upon a persecutor of the church, but now he's a blessing to the church. Now he's a helper to the church. Now he's preaching the gospel. People are being saved. The church is being edified in the truth. And listen, it is evidence that God had blessed his ministry. And what happened? What was the outcome? One final verse, 24. Simple, very short verse. And they glorified God in me. You know, I, I, can, I can relate to this. Anytime I hear about somebody that used to be a herder of the church, become a helper of the church because they got saved, man, don't you just want to praise God? Anytime somebody gets saved, Church ought to go wild. I mean, heaven rejoices because a lost sinner has come to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. And when that happens, what do we do? We give God glory. It's a God thing. It's not a man thing. It's a God thing. And listen, we're, we're going to stop there. We, we'll uh, probably, Brother Gary's preaching next Wednesday night. I'll probably continue on this maybe the following Wednesday night. It's a good study, isn't it? 
It's a good study. I like the book of Galatians. There's some, there's some meat there uh, to get a hold of and help us along the way. It really, really is. God bless you. Glad you came tonight. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to stand and sing just two verses of an invitation. That's how we're going to close our service. Let's stand. We're going to sing two verses. And if you need prayer tonight, you come on. Somebody meets at the altar. Somebody will pray with you. Maybe you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. Be a good night to get saved. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Hey, it'd be a good night. Take care of business. Remember what I said? God's got a plan for your life. It may have taken us all a whole lifetime to figure it out. But why don't we get it fixed and live it? Amen? Pray with me. Father, we come to you tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you for the scriptures. It's been good to get together and sing together and pray together. And Lord, it's good tonight to hear from heaven what you would have for us. Let it be food for our soul. Let it strengthen us in our faith. And Lord, if anyone needs prayer tonight, maybe just somebody needs someone to pray with them. Lord, I just pray they'll come sometime during these two verses. And Lord, bless we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. While we sing two verses. You need prayer, you come on. God's so good, isn't he? Lamb of God, I come. You need prayer? We'd love to pray with you tonight. Everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. So good seeing y'all in church tonight. Let's sing a song, Mike. <clears throat> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. living just because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives fear is gone because I know he holds a future and life is worth the living just because he lives.